Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to week one of splashing around with Installatron apps at our flex course for May of this year, which is crazy to think we're already five months through the year. Um, <laughs> I'm here with Amanda um, this hello. this time, um, and we're super excited to kick off this month of the flex courses, um, our flex course on Installatron apps. And I think it's going to be really fun. I'm excited to see how we go through like the different applications and everything that we're going to talk about. Um, so you might notice that this week or this month of um, the Flex course is not WordPress related, which is right. crazy to think about. Um, WordPress is primarily our main bread and butter at Reclaim for Installatron applications, but we wanted to take this time to look at some of the other applications we offer that are super cool um, within Installatron. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think I, I second Meredith's idea or point that this is really exciting. We're happy to do this. Um, and while we have like some, we're very comfortable with WordPress and we have a very strong WordPress user base there, we're definitely seeing a lot of interest and usage um, and potential for some of these other applications that we're going to talk about. So while you know we're certainly not experts on these applications, um, certainly not, and even to the same extent that we are pretty comfortable with WordPress, um, we are also expanding our knowledge on them and are excited to support them however we can. Um, and we also, even for some of the ones that you may not be as familiar with on this list, uh, we have some interesting takes on why they might uh, benefit the community. Absolutely, yeah. So this week in particular, we're looking at Omeka and Omeka S, um, or or commonly known as Omeka Classic and Omeka S. So two different applications, but under the same development group. Um, so we're also going to look at scalar URLs, U URLs um, in Matomo um, through the, the next couple of weeks, um, all open source and um, I'm looking forward to the last half, too, because there are definitely some good alternatives to like Google Analytics and um, Bitly as well. So yeah. stay tuned for those and we'll share some good resources there. So, so yes, so we are looking at um, Omeka and Omeka S today, um, particularly um, and, or how each application is used and um, the differences between the two. So you can, how you can use them in, in different ways within your classroom um, or for projects and that sort of thing. So we'll um, go through each individually and then the on, on that side and then how um, you might incorporate those. Um, we'll look at some example sites towards the end. Um, I've got some um, different projects throughout um, our Reclaim infrastructure through Domain of One's Own and shared hosting users um, and how and they how each um, version of Omeka is used within those applications from there. Um, and then looking at how to install an Installatron and some fun updates for Omeka S in particular um, and some functions within Installatron that now work um, for those. So we'll, we can go over, uh, over that side. Um, and then some other things to keep in mind about um, manual updates through um, plugins and themes and um, what to look out for when working with those. So got those. And first, if you're not familiar with Omeka, you might be like, what the heck is it? <laughs> what is Omeka and Omeka, or Omeka, and Omeka S? Um, both are open source and um, they are about, or they are applications working with um, digital collections and aimed towards working with media rich exhibits. So this is a great way to visually um, encapsulate any projects or events in history and kind of create a collection of all different resources there. Omeka or Omeka Classic um, is a single site use case. So you can have um, different elements within the exhibit of images, videos, audio recordings, and even maps and timelines, which is really cool. Um, and this is really centered around one topic. I kind of look at it as like a single WordPress site. I know I'm referring to WordPress in this instance, but that's kind of how 
my brain immediately goes to when I'm talking through um, the different versions of Omeka. So Omeka Classic tends to work towards one project or showcasing a few events. Within a larger event, you can build those collections and exhibits there using different themes and plugins within Omeka Classic um, on that side. Um, on the flip side, Omeka S is good for multiple sites within one install. So this would equate to WordPress multi-site within the Omeka Atmosphere. Um, I've seen uh, professors use this in their courses and then assigning one site to each student. And so if it was an overall general course throughout the year um, on history of America, you could assign out like the 1930s or the 1940s to each student. And that would be one site per student as a project. Um, so that's always really cool to see. So you can have multiple in the same sense as Omeka Classic, you can continue to have multiple collections and exhibits. With Omeka S, you can make them their own site. So they'll have their own unique theme and they can use different plugins as needed um, to help build out the site, the subsite as well. Awesome. So when you're getting started with Omeka or Omeka S, you can install with an Installatron directly, which is super cool. Um, One-click installer and also handles automatic updates to the core versions. So all the files and folders within the application that allow it to run as Omeka or Omeka S. On the flip side for those, you do have to manually update plugins and themes within the file manager, but we'll go through all of that as well. Um, Installatron also incorporates the quick cloning feature, so you can clone between locations if you're going to re redesign a website, but you want to keep the old one up. Cloning is really helpful to make sure you have a um, copy on each side. I feel like for installing Omeka, it's very similar, again, to WordPress. Um, Absolutely where Installatron almost, I mean, Installatron knocks it out of the park with WordPress support and um, setup, but Omeka is kind of like the coming in second there. Um, they've, they've definitely upped their game with uh, being able to support Omeka and being and keeping things running smoothly. And as we're gonna talk about like making it even easier to to add it to Installatron. I think that the main thing that when I was an admin at a school was uh, difficult for me to wrap my head around is that the one-click login does not work the same in Omeka yes. as for WordPress. And so something for folks here to keep in mind is that um, if you're having some issues with your Omeka installation um, and you need maybe us to look at the back end. We're not going to be able to get in as easily. We can't, we can still get in, but it would make the process go faster if you made us an account or something like that. Um, so that we could get into the dashboard section because we don't have the same kind of like immediate access as we do to WordPress sites. Yeah, absolutely. And that is a good point about the password resets and everything. Um, we have a little trick on our end to be able to like access the backside of things. And I actually was troubleshooting a ticket this week and figured out how to do it with Omeka S instead of Omeka Classic. So we're able to get access if you need help with anything, but we're not getting the password resets and all that good stuff. So we can bypass email password resets if needed on that side. So I do want to do a little demo as we go through installing um, Omeka Classic and then Omeka S and we can take a look at like the dashboards and kind of see how they're different. Um, I think that's pretty cool. So I'm in my cPanel here and I'm going to install Omeka and Omeka Classic or Omeka S. I keep getting them all mixed up <laughs> in my head. Um, so most of our shared hosting servers do have them for fe under featured applications and you can customize this list within domain of one's own, which is really helpful. So you can highlight the different applications that you want. So we've got Omeka and Omeka S up at the top here. I'm going to go ahead and install Omeka Classic on my account. So I'm going to use subfolders um, and just leave CMS here 
for now. Um, and then I'm going to change the username and the password super quickly. So I know what it is when I log in. And then easy peasy, one click to install down at the bottom of the page. Like it literally takes two seconds to install Omeka and through Installatron, which is incredible. So got all of those and that's gonna process here and you'll see a couple options. You can go to, let me zoom in actually, I realize my screen's probably a little too small. Um, you can zoom in or um, click on the top URL to access the main site right away or even directly to the admin dashboard, which is what I'm gonna do. And then you'll put in your username and password. get logged in and you'll see your Omeka Classic dashboard from here. You can move between different your your items, collections, item types, and all of that sort of thing. So you can customize um, the types of items you want to upload. So if you have like a particular video, you can um, add that in here or um, customized if you're like documenting um, different quilting techniques too. I've seen a site about um, quilting within Omeka. You can create those as, as types um, to kind of categorize your site and then put all of the items into the items section. You can modify any plugins. Um, here you can, you'll see a list of all the plugins that are available for installation through your install and we'll go through adding those really quickly too and configuring on that side. And then same with themes, you'll see a couple of themes we have built in into the installer in Installatron 3 in particular, same with the plugins. And these are all set as defaults when you install a fresh copy. So it kind of gives you the base to get started. Yeah. Um, question. Yes. When it comes to... Um, adding mm -hmm. a completely different theme or a completely different plugin. Um, is there a easy one click way to do that? Or is that going to be more involved? It's a little more involved, um, unfortunately, within install within Omeka and Omeka S. You, ha you do have to go to the Omeka repository um, for plugins and modules. So I'm going to look at that really quick. So Omeka lists all of their plugins on a single page, and then they do this for Omeka S2. So it's really handy to have this repository here. Um, so it is a little bit more um, manual in the sense that you have to download the latest version from this page and then upload either through FTP or in the file manager to the plugins folder, mm -hmm. extract the folder, and then you can install. So um, I'll just do admin images as an example, um, I typically tend to use the file manager more than FTP for this scenario, just because it's quicker quicker clicks for me and I'm already in cPanel if I'm working on my Omeka site. Okay. So I'm gonna be in public HTML and then I'll go into the CMS folder. So you wanna navigate to the directory where your application lives. Um, typically, we recommend that you do subdomains for Omeka or installing it on the Apex domain. This is to prevent any issues with HT access rules, redirects, or anything like that if you're working with more than one application on your domain name. So if you wanted to have WordPress over top of your main domain, so like I have WordPress on my domain, meredithfiero.com. I would want to do um, omeka.meredithfiero.com if I was working on a project um, to work, work through um, those applications. That just helps more with organization. You can even see on my file system, I've got tons of subdomains set up um, just in general testing. So you want to, so that's really helpful to kind of isolate where a particular project is on that side. From there. So I've got the admin images plugin downloaded and then I'm going to move into the plugins folder 
and you can see we've got coins, exhibit builder, and simple pages. Those are the defaults included with our application installer. And then I'm going to upload the zip of the admin images. You want to make sure it's the zip, not folder, of the plugin itself. And then you go back in to extract the zip into the folder. And that's super quick. You'll see if I reload the page here, we'll see a folder for admin images, which is perfect. And if I go back to the plugins page on my dashboard, you'll see it's already there ready for installation at that point. Omeka recognizes that the, the plugin folder is in the file system and is ready for installation at that point. So super cool. Um, I, I'll post the documentation on managing themes and plugins. And it's really important to keep track of the plugins that are installed on both Omeka and Omeka Classic um, to make sure that those are up to date before you update the site, and particularly with Omeka S. Um, Omeka S requires that all plugins and themes are using the most recent version at the point of update. Um, so like Omeka S is at like 4.1. So once 4.1 is released, all plugins and themes need to use the latest version at that point to be updated for the yeah. site's update. And I think another thing that might be helpful to point out is that you're not necessarily going to be told by this dashboard that an update is needed um, for your exactly. plugins. You're going to have mm -hmm. to, you know, it's it's kind of an extra step where you're you're going to have to go and check and see if there is there is an update to that plugin. But like Meredith said, there's a handy page that has all of the plugins listed there, and when you click into each plugin, you can see. You know, it has the download link to the latest version and also just lists all the other versions. So um, if you know an update is coming to the main application, always workflow should be check plugins and themes first and see if you need to make any updates there. Um, but Omeka is not going to tell you from within the dashboard the way that WordPress would. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have a lot of people use like GitHub repos, because these are in, in GitHub as well, um, to subscribe to notifications on release as well. So that's really helpful. Um, or using RSS feeds if there's there's one for, um, for the particular plugins on that side. That's a good way to kind of aggregate in notifications on that side. Um, so that is a mecha classic. Um, kind of a quick glance at the dashboard. Um, and we can go into Omeka S as well. I'm going to uninstall this one just so there's no confusion. And while that's uninstalling, I'm going to install Omeka S on the education subdirectory. And I'm super excited for this one because there were some changes with the way that Installatron interacts with Omeka Classic. Okay, just one. Or Omeka S. Um, on that side. So I'm going to install this um, and kind of talk about what those changes are. <laughs> um, so Omeka S is fairly recent um, in the sense that I want to say it's been out for the last, since I've been working at Reclaim, which is about five years at the point of this video, um, it came out about three to four years ago and we built a custom installer for Omeka S, which means that it wasn't managed through Installatron. So we pulled an installation of Omeka S, created essentially a template. So kind of kind of what um, Taylor's been working on with the with the spot templates and all of that stuff across domain of one's own sites. So we were able to replicate that across all servers. Um, and then when we installed the application, there were two things that did not work when we used custom applications. And that was cloning, uh, sorry, three things, cloning, importing um, it to your account and across accounts and restoring backups, which was super unhelpful at some points. Um, but we were able to make some workarounds where we could like install a fresh copy of 
the the site and like compress files to make sure that it was using the same same version and all of this sort of stuff. So there were workarounds we could work with. Um, but recently with our custom application installer changes, we were able to submit Omeka S to Installatron for um, their repository. So now Omeka S is available to any server that runs Installatron, which is super cool. Um, and as a result of that, we gained access to restoring, importing, and cloning, which is so much easier than, than the workarounds. So I'm going to do that really quick because I just like, I love that we can actually work on that um, from here. So I'm going to click clone on my Omeka S application and then just use Omeka S and we'll let it go. might take a minute, but now you can clone applications or clone Omega S between different sites. So if you wanted to create like a template of one site and then move it over from project to project, that's super easy to do now with the cloning feature. You no longer have to move things over manually. So I've got my Omega S clone here. Super cool. Um, there. So All right. So we'll take a look at what the dashboard looks like really quick as well. Perfect. Okay. So this definitely looks a little different between the two. So if I go to Omeka and then Omeka, Omeka S, you can see like it's, de it's definitely showing that it's two different applications there. For sure. So you'll see on the left, you can even you can even have your own site, different item sets, users, modules. Um, there is a little bit of language changes between Omeka Classic and Omeka S. So plugins are modules um, on that side. So you can see we'll have, we don't have any currently set up in the in the application, but I'll go through like we did with Omeka Classic to at, adjust the particular application. Um, and within the site's profile, you want to create a new one. So I'll just create a test one super fast so you can see what it looks like when working with particular or particular site to change like themes and all that good stuff. Um, when you're in the main dashboard, it's kind of like the network admin dashboard of, for WordPress, you'll see a full list of everything like sites, items, all of that. And you can even navigate further into a particular site at that point. Um, if you go to site admin, I believe you'll be able to like make different pages, um, change the navigation for like menus, create new users and at, like provide them with access to the particular site. So this is really helpful too. Um, for user management, but then you'll also go into items here and then add all of the items. Um, so, I, so I guess within Omeka S, you have to add items to the main site and then assign it to particular sites on that side. Um, so if I go to edit, you can check the theme. Um, so this is the classic default theme that Omeka S installs with each site. Um, I'm going to grab a module really quickly and download that. Um, so I'll do something similar like coins as well. Um, and then move up in my file manager to my education directory and then click on, th on modules and upload the zip as well. So the same same way that you would with Omega Classic. And you would do the same with the themes if needed. Um, any themes you might have from there. And actually, while I do that, I'm going to go into modules and I'll show you what the module looks like. Um, so I picked, this is a good troubleshooting moment. So I picked an older version of a plugin that has not been updated recently. So because of that, Omeka 
S is what I installed. It's using version 4.0.1, but the module and plugin requirements require a lower version of Omeka to be able to install. And so I, I personally don't like the way that the that kind of error comes up because I've had people before get confused. And because if you look back at that error um, where it says it requires, um, the, you know, version three, it looks like it's indicating that at least it requires at least version three. Um, yeah, that's true. Really confused because they think, well, you know, I'm above version three, so this should work. Um, but that's really not what it's saying. It's saying that it requires that version and no higher. Right. Yes. Either um, lower than or the version 3.0.0 or lower than that version. So I will grab a different one, um, probably one from 2023. So I'll just use this access resource one. Um, and that's a good tip too, to look at the updated date on each plugin, because if it's updated around the time that you're updating the Omeka version, um, that is a good tell that it is ready to go or closer to the version and compatible at that point. So I'm going to upload the access resource. And this is all, it's also really kind of handy to like pay attention to what the dates mean. Um, also when we're working with PHP too, that's a whole other conversation we could have. Um, but the, I've always found that the date correlates to PHP compatibility um, as we're moving through um, different versions there. So I'm extracting the new plugin on that side and we have the file open and then I'll just give this page a refresh and you can see I have a green light to install the plugin on that end um, from here. And so then there's just some additional configuration needed sometimes on those plugins there. Um, so I have a question. Yes. Um, if you go back to the dashboard for Omeka, okay. mm -hmm. um, you were able to click into the site section and control the theme for a particular site um, right from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't see, like, and there's like a section that says theme, but I don't see a section that says modules that's specific to that site. Do, can you only... Um, install modules that are network wide or can you yeah okay yeah so that would be network wide across all sites um with omega s from my understanding of it is that there is the one hub url but then you are able to designate one site as like the home page so folks can be redirected automatically to like a front page and then at that point, once the other sites are worked on, you can change the theme in particular for those pages, uh, for those sites. Um, but the modules are going to be available to all, all sites within the network. You can't specify specific, specific ones on that side. Um, and probably the same thing for themes in terms of availability. Yes. Um, but you can activate... Um, whichever theme you're looking for specifically on, on a site. Yeah, absolutely. On the, on that side. Um, so that also brings me to a cool trick with, with the HT access file within Omeka S. If you want it to be a particular site um, that you're working with. So if I go to the homepage here into sites, and view the test URL. You'll see at the top, it goes to my domain name, um, education slash S. So that shows that's where all of the like application files of Omeka live. Um, but if you go to just education on the main domain, it's gonna bring up a list of all sites. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times um, admins will create a homepage site and then redirect all traffic to 
meredithfiro.com slash education to the home site. Um, that is done through a redirect within cPanel. So you would set up whichever URL you wanted to wanted the homepage site to be um, within Omeka S um, and set and configure that. And then once that's configured, you want to go into the HD access file itself and um, cPanel automatically drops the redirect rule at the bottom of the file for the HD access. So you want to move it all the way up to the top and click save mm -hmm. so that the, the server sees the redirect when loading the site first, and then it just automatically processes to the, to the homepage site itself. So I found that that really helps with site management on that side from there. And then another thing to look at is just the core files for Omeka and, um, or, or Omeka S in particular, and that is anything that's not modules, themes, or um, the config file. Yeah, the um, config modules and themes are all dynamic and are specific to your particular application. Um, the config folder holds the database credentials that are needed to connect the files to the database um, within the site. And then obviously modules and themes, as well as files. I did not include that in my last list, files. Um, so if you have any images or media um, embedded in your items or collections within Omeka, you wanna make sure to save those. Um, so if you do have to update manually, um, I just grab a, a, like select each folder and then compress them into a zip drive, like a zip archive, and then up, update the application manually if I need to. Um, and once the application's updated, you just extract the folders back out into the system and it'll override the the default into what you've you've set up on that side. Um, so that was a way around moving things as well before the cloning feature fixed was fixed with the installer. So we've got those demos there. So let's go back to our slides and see what we're looking at from here. Um, so we've got the cloning. We talked about the plugins and themes um, as well. So just a reminder to download the full zip of those plugins to move over to the file system and then extract within the plugins or the themes folder, modules or themes folders for Omeka S in particular. And then be mindful that these are all gonna be manual going forward. Um, there's no automatic updates for plugins and themes within the Omeka the Omeka sphere on that side um, from there. Um, so we did briefly mention this too, but when you're working with Omeka, we definitely recommend working with subdomains, particularly if you're working with multiple applications on your account. So if you're working with WordPress over top, I have an example site that's actually that, that works through this. So that's pretty, pretty um, interesting to see that you could do like, like WordPress as like a landing page and then move into um, like Omeka on a subdomain on that side. Um, this helps with any HD access rules um, or permissions and that sort of thing. So we want to make sure subdomains are utilized wherever possible um, for those for more stability there. And um, Omeka S will default to subfolders and that's totally fine. So if you wanted to work on a project on a subdomain that's Omeka S, it would be like Omeka s .com slash s slash site. That's totally fine because it's within that one folder. So no need to worry about subfolders um, or subdomain changes there. Um, so, and that's actually not a feature within Omeka s. You can't change the directory root like how you could in, in a multi-site, WordPress multi-site. You could, you could change it from a subfolder to a subdomain install. It's only subfolders within Omeka s. Right. From there. Um, awesome. Okay. So now we are going to move into some examples. Um, I've got a couple for each um, Omeka S and Omeka Classic here. Um, and these are all across Reclaim um, from shared hosting to domain of one's own. Um, and on, even Reclaim Cloud too. We have a project that's working in Reclaim Cloud. Um, so it's kind of cool to see. I know this is Installatron focused. Um, but with um, Reclaim Cloud, it's really cool as examples. 
Um, so to start, we've got the Cork LGBT Archive, um, which showcases the history of the LGBT community within the within Ireland and um, in Cork specifically. Um, and I learned that this is actually the second largest community in Ireland, which is really um, which is really cool to see. Um, so I've got the site here. Let me switch my screen share. Um, so we've um, worked with, I've worked with Orla in some of the um, support tickets that, that they've submitted and to see the site kind of grow in the way that it has has been really cool. Um, they have a lot of items um, to showcase particular media items um, from, from videos to um, pamphlets and flyers to um, particular um, items themselves, so pictures of the items, and then organized into collections from from books to um, alliances to um, photography as well to kind of showcase the different um, events throughout the, the community. So like even um, the Gay Sweatshop in 1980, which was a play um, and in a London London based group um, performing in Cork, which is really cool. Um, from there. So exhibits and collections are a little um, a little bit the same that you can kind of compile different items into different topics. So um, in the same way like a category would be. Categories or tags on that side. So that's really, um, really cool. So um, you can see that this is the, the exhibit itself that compiles four items into an exhibit um, there. On that side, so then this links out to some other um, other folks in the community, which is super cool. Um, next is making modern America. Um, this is a domain of one's own in particular um, project, working on the um, Great Depression. Um, and I thought this was really cool because this is a great example of a class project working together to build out um, a particular. Um, site about a specific topic. Um, this could be all. This is also a good example of how Omeka S can be created um, or be incorporated to. I believe this was built before Omeka S was a, was an application. Um, so this was a class research project that dove into um, the 1930s and the American world after the Great Depression, um, which is really interesting. So they um, showcase like lesson plans. Um, here you can see like different PDFs of, of that great example of like how you're able to embed different media types into the application. Um, yeah, I really like how, um, how different, uh, these two projects are in terms of both kind of dealing with history, but one is dealing with a kind of an evolving history item, I imagine, whereas mm -hmm. like, um, for the Cork community, uh, it, you have that balance of something that is archived, something that's historical, but also like what's developing as well. Um, whereas this is a great example of something that is kind of a fully cohesive and wrapped up package of uh, a snapshot of the past. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I definitely like that and like how they both incorporate different media mm -hmm. options within each. Um, so this site in particular works with Neatline as well to create a map to show to show how um, Oklahoma looked um, in particular during the 1930s there, which is, I think, really cool um, on that side. Um, next is Georgetown Slavery. Um, this is the one that I was talking about that uses WordPress over top and then Omeka to kind of showcase the different um, events. And um, this is a important website um, that showcases the um, the history of slavery with the which with Georgetown University and, and their interactions with with that um, and how they're reconciling it today as well, um, which is really interesting to kind of take a look through and, and um, understand how it was incorporated into the university at the time and then how they've evolved, how they've evolved from that. And um, here is the WordPress site itself. So this is the landing page on the main Georgetown um, edu website and it shows different um a page kind of talking about the project itself and then the history quick link 
no, that's different. It's, it's a little bit of a, a way to get into it. So I got to look at the history and then um, I had it, I promise. <laughs> The Georgetown Slavery Archive. So the archive is the Omeka site mm. that showcases the different events um, of the of slavery within Georgetown. Um, so this uses even a different theme um, than the other sites too. So um, this was particularly built in Omeka Classic. Um, yeah, so I definitely recommend a read through if you are interested in the site. It was kind of interesting for me to to read through. Um, to see how, like how it was built, um, and even just understanding the whole the whole um, project in general. There, um, and then moving on to Omeka S examples, um, particularly within this Mount Sinai archive, which is an interesting um, collection of items from a monastery um, in um, Michigan. Um, from here. So we've got um, this one in particular works on um, a reclaimed cloud um, and is a project between Princeton University of Michigan and Tufts University. Um, and this one is cool because it works with um, uh, Amazon uh, Web Services S3 storage. So if you find that your your site is taking up a lot of space because media files tend to do so with photos and videos, they just hold a lot of data, um, you can incorporate um, S3 within your Omeka site, which I think is really cool. So you can offload the storage there and then continue to build your site on Reclaim Hosting um, and manage manage the core of the, of the site from there. So that's really helpful. So this is, um, I believe they have each site built into like the icons, manuscripts, um, and liturgical objects between. Um, so that's really helpful. You can see all these different, um, these different uh, uh, pictures um, from there, which is super cool. And then finally, we've got um, another slavery project built in Omeka S um, through the On These Ground project. Um, it's a Mellon, Mellon grant funded project um, across the country, um, but this one in particular is built um, from the University of Georgia. Um, so that's that's really cool to see as well. Um, so you can look at different organizations and um, resources as well on that one. Cool. All right. So that's the, on these grounds. I'll post links to all these websites um, in the chat as well. And um, that is all I've had for resources. Um, let us know. We'll be in the Discord chat too. If you um, have any questions throughout this, um, definitely let us know, and we can we can chat through those um, on that side. But um, yeah, that's that's Omeka and Omeka S from here. In a nutshell, a little splash into Omeka and Omeka S. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Well, thank you all so much for joining and we are looking forward to next week um, and seeing what uh, what applications we're working with then. Yeah. Join us next week for Scalar. So Scalar. Yes. Um, <laughs> we were talking about the other the other application, so I was not sure which portion <laughs> of the timeline we were in um, yes. on that side. So we'll be looking at Scalar and um, that's also going to be a really cool one. Mm. Um, I'm excited to to see that as well. For sure. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. See you next time. See ya.